This is the Disaster Recovery Pro. Welcome back to our video series where we discuss important concepts in disaster recovery and business continuity. In today's video, we're going to begin our journey to examine the evolution of disaster recovery solutions over time. And we're going to start with some of the earliest real recovery solutions, which were based on tape backups. Back in the mid-90s, my very first real IT job was running nightly backups for a large company. So I would sit in the data center all night. I'd have to manually mount tapes on tape drives all over the data center, run backup commands by hand for every system, record the run times for the backups by hand, put dates and labels on the tapes by hand, file them away. I'd have to manually send tapes off-site for long-term storage or recall them from long-term storage if we had a big restore to do, and do restores by hand by basically searching through the tapes until I found one I needed and restoring it manually onto the system. Back then, with the limitations of the logistics and the technology, it wasn't practical to do full backups all the time, so you'd run your backups on a schedule. Typically, that would be full backups on a weekend, incremental backups in between, and you'd periodically send your full backups off-site for permanent storage. This model maintained even when automated software and tape libraries came into play. Generally, you'd do your operational or day-to-day -day restores from the tapes that you had on-site. If you had to do a larger DR, you'd have to order your tapes from off-site. And the same would be true if there was, say, a legal investigation where you had to go and look at, say, 10 years of emails for a certain user. You'd have to get those tapes from off-site as well. Back in those days, it was magnetic tapes. They were basically not much different than videotapes. That technology got better over time, but in the early days, it was basically camcorder tapes. Those tapes had reliability issues. If you used them a lot, they would tend to fall apart, jam and fail. The leaders on the tapes would break. The tape itself would split in the middle or just degenerate to the point where you couldn't use it anymore and it wouldn't hold a recording. When tapes were shipped, they could easily be damaged from either just the shock of being on a truck, or if they went through airport security, they could get blanked out by the metal detectors. I've ha actually seen that happen, and it was pretty bad. The key thing from this age is that all these technology limitations and the logistics of shipping tapes off-site and getting them back was the thing that really determined and dictated what the RTO and RPO for a recovery solution could be. The business requirements really couldn't come into play because the technology limited it so much. The overhead of having to actually handle the tapes was a big problem at that point. Automation through backup software and tape libraries certainly helped, but they never really got rid of all of these logistical issues. And while tape technology improved over time, the early tapes were really slow at moving data, especially on restores. Usually you could back up in a reasonable amount of time, but the restores would take much longer than the backups, so time was always a factor. And like I said before, it was the technology that was dictating what you could do for an RTO rather than your RTO requirements dictating what technology you needed. So if we take a look at a very typical old-style tape recovery solution, you literally have to move your data. That is, put your monthly off-site tapes onto a truck, cart them over to your DR site, wherever that is. You'll probably have to build your backup server first, along with the servers and network you're going to recover, get those tapes loaded into a silo over there or loaded by hand, get your tapes either imported or import the catalog database, depending on what software you're using, and then you can start spinning your restores. This is whole process getting up to this point where you can spin your restores could take hours or the better part of a day. And don't forget, it could be hours or even a day or more before you can even get your tape shipped to your recovery site on top of all this. After that, you still have to deal with the amount of time it takes to actually physically restore the data and rehydrate those servers you're trying to recover before you can even get into starting up your databases, configuring and starting your applications, and having your users test. So again, just the logistics of handling the physical tape and having to import those tapes into your backup software it adds a lot of overhead, and that overhead is the main driver that limits your ability to choose your RTO and RPO. 
In this case, your RTO is going to be determined by this entire process that you have to go through to get your tapes there and get everything ready to the point where you can run restores. And your RPO is going to be determined by how often you send that full set of backups off-site. In some cases, uh, the RPO is going to be up to 30 days. And the cost to do more off-site shipments, well, that can get a little unreasonable, so you kind of have to play that balancing act. It's not a perfect solution, it's got a lot of limitations, but it does get you from point A to point B, and that was enough for a long time. As business continuity matured as a discipline, and as business needs got more and more critical and time-dependent, the solution started to not be sufficient. So if we fast forward about eight years, we get to our next evolution in disaster recovery, and that's VTL or Backups Direct to Disk. VTL stands for Virtual Tape Library. What that really is, is that's really a disk that acts and looks like a tape drive to your operating system or backup software. So these two things are basically functionally equivalent, even though there's a slightly different way you'd use them. The driver behind this advancement was the improvement of disk replication technology and the network bandwidth to support that disk replication technology. It allowed you to do a few things that you couldn't do before, at least not efficiently. The key thing here is that you could write your backups to disk, and you could use disk replication to copy those over to a second site or a DR site in maybe not real time, but close enough to get your backups over there. Actual tape drives didn't go away yet. They would still exist which is generally what you do is you'd still want to have a set of tapes that you were sending off-site periodically, usually once a month. So you'd use tape drives to clone off a copy of a set of full backups that you could send off-site. And that would be your backup plan now, rather than your main solution. So this development eliminated a lot of the headaches of restoring from tape. You didn't have to rely on these finicky tapes that would tend to break or get damaged in transit. Since your backups were replicated, it makes a lot more sense to have a backup server that's pre-staged at your DR site rather than build one on demand. And all these things add up to giving you a lot more flexibility in picking your RTO and RPO since all your backups are already there and you greatly reduce the amount of overhead that you have to spend to get up to the point where you can start your actual data restores. With tape recovery, getting to that point might take you one or two days. With disk backup and recovery, it might take you one, two, three hours, maybe. And this put you in a situation where the business could say, I need this application up in 24 hours, and you could actually deliver that. So there's much more flexibility in choosing that RTO and RPO targets that are key to defining a disaster recovery solution. If we take a look at a picture of our solution now, You'll see that we've replaced the data mover, that truck that was carrying the tapes from your off-site storage to your DR site. We've replaced that whole clunky process with now a dedicated replication line that's moving the data directly from the disks on one side to the disks on the other. This also gives you some flexibility that you can pre-stage that backup server in your recovery site and just attach the disks once you've got your replication done and you're ready to start recovering. So that takes out a lot of the overhead and that's where most of your savings are. Again, because we've streamlined the process of getting to the point where we can run restores quickly, we've allowed for shorter RTOs, that's recovery time objectives. But the place where you get the biggest gain is in RPO or recovery point objective. Now your recovery point objective is determined by how often you do your backups, that's your incremental backups too, rather than how often you send those full backups off-site. That gives you a lot of granularity. There is a factor of replication lag. It's again, the replication technology and the bandwidth available at the time wasn't as great as it is now, so there may be a few hours delay between the time you do your backups and the time it's reflected in the recovery site, but that's actually relatively minor. Now your incremental backups, you have access to all of them in your recovery site within, say, a couple of hours after finishing them. And that gives you a much more granular RPO than you could possibly do before under the old system. So if we look at our process on the side, we've knocked out a lot of the pain points there. We really just have some overhead involved in 
getting that backup server ready to do restores, which is always going to be there to some extent when you're dealing with backups. But the speed of that process has increased quite a bit because we're not waiting for physical tapes. We don't have to spin a tape to import the catalog. The catalog will be there on the disk. That gets you to the point where you can run your restores, start your applications, and test your applications a lot faster. So that covers the first stage in the evolution of disaster recovery solutions. When we come back next time, we'll take a look at the logical ramifications of the continued improvement in replication technology and what that means for recovery solutions. Basically, we opened up a lot of options for shorter RTO and RPOs, even beyond what we can achieve with replicated disk backups. So thanks for watching today's presentation. If you found this topic interesting and you want to learn more about disaster recovery and business continuity, please go ahead and like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with everybody else. And like we always say here at the Disaster Recovery Pro, hope for the best, but plan for the worst, and have a great day.